Gimli is a fictional character from J. R. R. Tolkien's Middle Earth Legendarium, featured in The Lord of the Rings. A dwarf warrior, he is the son of Gloin, a character from Tolkien's earlier novel, The Hobbit. Gimli is chosen to represent the race of dwarves in the Fellowship of the Ring. As such, he is one of the primary characters of the novel. In the course of the adventure, Gimli aids the ring bearer Frodo Baggins, participates in the War of the Ring, and becomes close friends with Legolas, overcoming an ancient enmity of dwarves and elves. Topic: <laughs> Character Overview. Gimli was a member of Durin's folk who volunteered to accompany Frodo Baggins as a member of the Fellowship of the Ring on the quest to destroy the One Ring. He was an honorable, wise, and stalwart warrior. Gimli became deeply enamored upon meeting the elf lady Galadriel, and he forged a friendship with the elf Legolas despite his original hostility due to the fact that Thranduil, Legolas's father, had once incarcerated Gloin, Gimli's father, one of the company of Thorin Oakenshield in The Hobbit. These relationships helped rehabilitate the long troubled relationship between elves and dwarves of Middle Earth. Topic: Appearances. Topic: Literature. Gimli was born in the Erdluin Blue Mountains in the year 2879 of the Third Age. His father was Gloin, one of the former companions of the Hobbit, Bilbo Baggins. Gimli had wanted to accompany his father and the others in the company of Thorin Oakenshield on their quest to reclaim Erebor the Lonely Mountain in the year 2941, but at age 62 he was deemed too young. He was a remote descendant of Durin the Deathless, chief of the Seven Fathers of the Dwarves and ancestor to the Dwarven people to which Gimli belonged, the Longbeards. Gimli was of the royal line, but not close to the succession. He was the third cousin once removed of Dane II Ironfoot, king of Durin's folk, and the first cousin once removed of Balin, also one of Bilbo's former companions, and later Lord of Moria for a short time. Gimli was introduced in the first volume of The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, at the Council of Elrond Half Elven. Gimli and his father were attending the council which was held in TA 3018 to bring news of their home, Erebor, and to warn that the Dark Lord Sauron was searching for Bilbo. There they learned that Bilbo's kinsman Frodo now owned the ring, a ring of power forged and then lost by the Dark Lord Sauron. The council decided to have it destroyed by casting it into the volcanic Mount Doom in Sauron's domain of Mordor. Frodo volunteered for the task, and Elrond chose eight people of varying races to aid him in his task—including Gimli. Thus, the Fellowship of the Ring was formed. Within the Fellowship there was initially friction between Gimli and the elf Legolas, for various reasons, their races bore an old grudge against each other over the ancient matter of the Necklace of the Dwarves and the destruction of Doriath, and more recently Thranduil, Legolas' father, once imprisoned Gimli's father Gloin as described in The Hobbit. When the company was forced to enter an ancient underground dwarf realm, the Mines of Moria, Gimli was at first enthusiastic and hoped to find a recently established colony of his people there, led by Balin. However, Moria was still inhabited by a huge number of orcs and several cave trolls, as well as a Balrog, and Balin and his folk were all dead. The Fellowship found his tomb in the Chamber of Records, together with a chronicle of events, but orcs had discovered their presence and they had to fight their way out. After their leader Gandalf the wizard fell into a chasm during a heated battle with the Balrog, the Fellowship finally escaped the mines. Aragorn, a ranger, then led them to the forest of Lothlorien, populated by elves who were not friendly to dwarves. Gimli was told he had to be blindfolded if he was to enter the forest, and his refusal nearly led to a violent situation, which was diffused only when Aragorn proposed that the entire Fellowship be blindfolded, which was done. Gimli's opinion of elves drastically changed when he met Galadriel, co-ruler of Lothlorien. Her beauty, kindness, and understanding impressed Gimli so much that, when given the opportunity to ask for whatever he wished, he responded that being able to see her and hear her gentle words was a gift enough. 
When pressed further, he admitted that he desired a single strand of her golden hair, so that he might treasure it and preserve it as an heirloom of his house, but that he could not ask for such a gift. Galadriel was so moved by his bold yet courteous request that she gave him not one, but three of her hairs. She also subsequently gave Gimli the name, Lockbearer. As a result, by the end of the sojourn in Lothlorien, Gimli had formed his unlikely friendship with Legolas. At Aemon Hen, the company was sundered, for Boromir, son of the steward of Gondor, tried to take the ring from Frodo and use it for Gondor and his own gain in their ongoing war against Sauron. Frodo fled at this and went ahead, accompanied only by his gardener Samwise Gamgee. In the second volume, the two towers, the other members of the Fellowship were scattered while looking for Frodo, and by ill chance the two other hobbits of the party, Mariadoc Brandybuck and Peregrine Took, were captured by orcs. Boromir was mortally wounded defending them, and it fell to Gimli, Aragorn and Legolas to set him on a funeral boat. They decided to go after Merry and Pippin, for Frodo's mission was out of their hands. After running a great distance in a few days and thus entering the land of Rohan, they met Aemir, third marshal of the Rittermark and nephew of Théoden, king of Rohan, and his Rohirrim riders, who had slain the orc band the three hunters were pursuing, leaving not a single one alive. When Aemir spoke ill of the name Galadriel, having been told false rumors about her, Gimli responded with overtly harsh words, leading to a hostile situation that again had to be diffused by Aragorn. After being informed about the situation in Rohan, Gimli and the others continued their search for the hobbits, and they came across a resurrected Gandalf, now Gandalf the White, in Fangorn Forest, who assured them that the hobbits were now safe. Gandalf led them to Rohan's capital, Adoras, where he roused King Théoden out of inaction and exposed his counselor, Grima Wormtongue, as a spy for Sauron's ally Saruman. Gimli proved his valor in combat in the ensuing battle against Saruman's forces. In that battle, he and Legolas engaged in an orc slaying contest. Gimli won by one, he killed 42 to Legolas's 41, although he received a minor head injury and his axe was notched on the iron collar of the 41st orc. During the battle, Gimli saved Aemir's life by slaying two orcs and driving off two others that had ambushed the marshal. Later, Gimli's vivid description of the glittering caves of Aglarond moved Legolas to promise to come back and visit the caves when the war was over. They eventually fulfilled this promise, with Gimli also consenting to visit Fangorn Forest. Their friendship was a model for overcoming prejudice, they even rode together on the same horse. After their victory, Gimli and the others went to Saruman's stronghold of Isengard, where Gandalf cast Saruman out of the Order of Wizards and broke his staff. During this conversation, Gimli saw through Saruman's lies with the memorable quote, This wizard's words stand on their heads. In the third volume, The Return of the King, Gimli accompanied Aragorn, Legolas, a company of rangers of the north, and Elrond's sons Eladan and Elrahir on the paths of the dead, where at the stone of a wreck Aragorn summoned the dead men of Dunharrow, spirits bound by oath to fight for the King of Gondor, which Aragorn rightfully was. Gimli witnessed the dead men rout enemy invaders at Pelargar in South Gondor by the power of fear alone. After Aragorn declared the spirit's oath fulfilled, the menfolk of South Gondor gathered to his banner, and they all sailed in the enemy's abandoned ships to Gondor's capital Minas Tirith, which was then under siege. Their arrival eventually led to victory in the Battle of the Pelennor Fields. Gimli alone represented the dwarves in the final battle against Sauron at the Black Gate of Mordor. He also recognized Peregrine Took's feet underneath a troll and saved the young hobbit's life. Before the host of Gondor could be overwhelmed, the ring was destroyed, and Sauron was defeated. After the war, Gimli led a large number of Durin's folk south to establish a new dwarf realm at Aglarond, and he became the first lord of the Glittering Caves. The dwarves of the Glittering Caves built great works in Rohan and Gondor, and replaced the ruined gate of Minas Tirith with a new one made of mithril and steel, according to the Red Book of Westmarch, after Aragorn's death in Fourth Age 120, Gimli, then 262 years old, very old for a dwarf, sailed with Legolas into the west, becoming the first dwarf to visit the Undying Lands. Adaptations. Gimli was voiced by David Buck in Ralph Bakshi's 1978 animated version of The Lord of the Rings. 
Here he is drawn as being almost as tall as the rest of the non-Hobbit members of the Fellowship. Gimli does not appear in the 1980 animated version of The Return of the King. He is portrayed by Tomi Salmela in the 1993 Finnish miniseries Hobbitit. In Peter Jackson's film trilogy 2001 Gimli is played by John Rhys Davies, who portrayed the character as having a Welsh accent. Rhys Davies happened to be taller than the actors playing the Hobbits, who were only 1.67 metres 5 feet 6 in actor Elijah Wood, playing Frodo Baggins and 1.70 metres 5 feet 7 in actors Sean Astin, Billy Boyd, and Dominic Monaghan, playing Sam Gamgee, Pippin Took, and Mary Brandybuck while Rhys Davies is 1.85 metres 6 feet 1 in. Thus in scenes where Gimli and the Hobbits appear together, their respective sizes remain in proportion, whereas in scenes where they have to interact with human-sized characters, tricks of scale had to be employed, especially since John Rhys Davies is also taller than Viggo Mortensen and Orlando Bloom who played Aragorn and Legolas respectively, both of whom are 1.80 metres 5 feet 11 in. Gimli wears a heavy helmet at the outset instead of getting one in Rohan as in the book, as well as wielding various axes of different shapes and uses X, small throwing axes, a walking axe, and a double-headed axe he obtains in Moria. In the book, he bears only one axe throughout. In the movies, Gimli's more prosaic and blunt style contrasted to Aragorn and Legolas is somewhat exaggerated, and he often provides the diffusing comic relief, with much of the humor based on heightism. Another major source of comic relief is his competitive, if friendly, feud with Legolas beginning in the course of the Two Towers, which is well continued into Return of the King where Gimli consistently finds himself out-achieved, especially when Legolas slays an Oliphant by himself. In the Hobbit movie series, Gimli is mentioned in The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug when Legolas inspects a locket containing pictures of Gloan's family and believes the image of young Gimli to be a goblin, infuriating Gloin. On stage, in the United States, Gimli was portrayed by Elizabeth Harris in the Cincinnati stage productions of The Fellowship of the Ring 2001, The Two Towers 2002, and The Return of the King 2003 for Clear Stage Cincinnati. At Chicago's Lifeline Theater, Gimli was played on stage by Brooks Dara in The Two Towers 1999. In Canada, Gimli was portrayed by Ross Williams in the three-hour Toronto stage production of The Lord of the Rings, which opened in 2006. In The Lord of the Rings, the musical he was played by Sevan Stefan throughout its London run. Concept and creation The name Gimli first appeared in Tolkien's works in The Tale of Tenuviel, the earliest version of the story of Beren and Luthien Tenuviel, found in the second volume of the Book of Lost Tales. Here, the name belongs to an aged elf, a prisoner along with Beren in the kitchens of Tivaldu, Prince of Cats forerunner of Sauron. During the writing of The Lord of the Rings, as told in The Return of the Shadow, Gimli's character was first named Fur, then Beren, and he was the son of Balin. Family tree Asterisk names in italics are Thorin and his company from The Hobbit. Notes and references External links Gimli on IMDb Gimli — Tolkien Gateway Gimli at the Thanes Book <laughs>